Good morning. <clears throat> it's time to the Canadian Stamper. Saturday morning crafting. It's going to be a super quick live today. Well, I've, I'm going to do a couple of things to, to sort of decorate up our pieces so that they're ready to go. Um, I also have our buffet set up for today. So let's actually go do a little field trip, shall we? Let's do field trip first. Forget about waiting for Facebook and their comments. Let's do it. Hold on to your socks, folks. I'm going on a roadie. <laughs> okay, so there are some fun stuff happening today. Uh, let me flip you around. I don't know what's happening with my comments here. Let's just see what happens. Uh-oh, rotate my phone. Hopefully that works for you guys. Okay, so I have, is that straight? Can somebody tell me if that's straight? Because now my comments are like taking over my space. Anyways, there's the setup for today. I got these new little baskets for holding trash for the, I'm a little concerned because they're white and these are the originals and they're blue. So when you put mucky inky stuff in there, it might get crazy. Anyways, let's do the projects. So we've got Easy Christmas. This one is one of my favorite. I think I've done it in the last two or three Facebook lives. I mean, buffets. This one's fun. And we've got some fall, some more fall. And then this one, this is the paper pumpkin from September. So you get to make one of each of these little treats. And then the last Halloween. So that's that. Now, let me show you over here. This is almost set up. I've got some inspiration. You can take photos and see what's what there. And then, geez, I hope my kitchen's clean. I'm seeing it in the background. <laughs> and then uh, there is some, yeah, these are kits that I'm gonna show. This one, one of them, I'm not gonna open them because I only have one hand, but one of them is the Christmas tag kit. And the other one is Christmas card kit. Okay, so I'm not really sure what's happening with my phone. I see myself sideways. I'm not seeing anything in the comments, so I'm just gonna go with it, it's fine. So if you're just joining, uh, we're doing treat holders. Now they could be for Halloween. You can do them for all kinds of stuff because um, it depends on the designer series paper you're using. Sorry, I was out of camera there. And so depending on the designer series paper, you can really theme it for whatever you like. Okay, let's go this way. And I really don't know if this is straight. So let's just have a little looky-loo. Now, did you guys get my um, my little teaser that was on that I posted online last night? I want to see your comments. There you are. Um, it's pretty funny. It's a diaper and uh, there was gnomes on it. Diapers and gnomes. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be fun. It was a little, uh, it was a bit odd pulling up, like searching Google for diaper and gnomes. I was not quite sure what kind of craziness I was going to get. But anyways, okay, here we go. Oh, look at you all in your comments. Love it. Morning, ladies, and perhaps Michael, if you are joining later, or hashtag replay. I gotta get some more men watching my my lives, hey? I hear men are up and coming for paper crafting. Okay, I feel like I'm really close to the table, but I'm rolling with it. I don't dare touch my camera again. Oh, Michael, you are here, I love it. Hi everybody, okay, let's do it. So this is the first one. I made this one this morning, literally like 30 seconds, y'all. So that's just plain Jane. Then we're gonna kick it up a notch and we're gonna do one of these. 
It's a double fold. It's like a double, I don't think this is a diaper fold. This is a diaper fold. That's what we're doing. That was my play on words. So clever, right? I better, um, Gail, your man's working. Nancy, yes, get Gary in here. I'm gonna just bring my table down because I'm, I'm feeling too, it's too intense. It's too in your face, my desk here. Okay, let's do it. Literally, it's gonna be so fast. So we're gonna do a few of them because it's gonna be so fast. Six by six piece of paper. If you are going to, if you get my newsletter, you will know what you needed for today, but really, I mean, it's just a six by six piece of paper. So here's the thing. Let me take this one apart so you can see. It's just folding, you don't even need any glue. It's cray cray. This is your raw piece. And the reason why I pull it apart is because we're gonna fold it like this, but this piece that folds down is what's gonna show on the outside. So when you are deciding which end, just know that this is what's gonna fold. Okay, so turn it on the diagonal. And fold tip to tip. Don't worry about, you know, perfectness and all that kind of stuff. Just, just fold it. You're good. Now, fun fact, just as I sidebar, things to not use your bone folder for. Do not use it to spread ink around on your ink pad. Like when you do the drops and you're re-inking an ink pad, don't use this to mush in the ink. Use a spoon, like the back side of a spoon, and just kind of move it around. And it's also not a screwdriver. <laughs> so I have my keyboard and I tried to use it. I tried to use it like a screwdriver. It doesn't work. Don't do it because I snapped it. Uh-oh, I'm frozen. Am I okay? I'm frozen on my screen, but that's okay. So we're folding it like this, and then it's really, you're gonna fold like this to make a triangle. So you're bringing this point and you're bringing it over here to make a triangle. My Facebook comments are gone, y'all. Oh, there we are. So do this. And then take the other side and do the same. Foldy, foldy. Like that, so you're lining up on here. Okay, we got that, let me do it again. So you're folding here. And then just give it a little crease. So you've made a triangle up top. Then take this one and come across this way to line up here. Then that's it. I'm just gonna fold this down. Fold this down and then it stays. That's it. Super cool, right? Super cool. Any six by six piece of paper I think is all we're after. That's it. Then it holds. You can do a gift card. And I've got some Ghirardelia chocolate. That's going to go in my tummy later. Uh, then I grab some other stuff. I don't think... So this one, I think, I think my mom gets these from uh, Costco and uh, puts them in stockings. I just want to not make it so um, bulky down at the bottom. I don't know if it's gonna fit. Uh, no, it's too it's too much. I think even if you were to fold it, it's not it's not a thing. This could work though. Oh my gosh! And you could do chocolate and a gift card, y'all. If I was working, my work friends would be getting this on their desk. So cute, right? We're going to decorate this. Uh, I'm thinking. Sure, let's do it now. Why not? Um, I just need a piece of paper and I had to go hijack um, some ink from one of the buffet kits. So this is the gnome we're using, but we're going to turn this into a jack-o-lantern. Surprise! Now I know how to fold these. Speak of my language. <laughs> 
Awesome. They're so fun, right? They're, it's super quick, super fast. All right. Uh, have some time. Yes, I hope you do come, Lori. I know you're busy with Peanut the dog. But yeah, I do miss your smiling face here for our card buffets. I don't know if this is gonna, no. I was hoping to avoid using the dies, but it might not be. So let's just see how this goes. I saw somebody do this. Maybe I should zoom in now. Love my table that goes up and down. Love it, don't have to mess with my camera. Okay, let's just see how this goes. I feel like I need a black. Let's do black first. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna use, so there's two tips on these, right? And I just want to round this out. Know what am I? So cute. Okay, and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna do his hat in brown. I have the colors that I have, a couple of browns, and then a couple of darks. Morning, Wendy. And then I've got pumpkin, hot, hot and cold, hot and cold pumpkin, <laughs> dark and light pumpkin. Um, oh my God, I'm so indecisive. Let's do the beard first. This so it's not going to be like the most amazing color job because we're it's just going to be fast. And then this one, so that's these are not matching. This is SU 500, this is from the skin tone series, and then this is light crumb cake. I think I don't have a dark crumb cake. Stampin' Up originally used to sell blends in singles and they don't do that anymore. So I think I only bought, at the time, a single. I thought that had happened with another color as well. All right. So of course you do want to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink when coloring with blends because we don't want the ink to bleed, you know? So I'm going back over with the same brown and I might leave leave it kind of, uh, whatchamacallit, not really, it's not solid. And I'm gonna do the easy pieces first. This is black, which is more like a gray. Is it black? Oh no, it's dark smoky slate. That's why it's not black. So buffets are almost full for November and that's it folks. That's it for the two, whoops, the last two buffets. I do have a couple of spots open for the November. I'm doing five and six for the mega class. So it's 10 projects. So you can do virtual or in person. And there's a product share. Oh, I should show you the product share pieces. Okay, so I'm trying a new coloring technique here where I'm going from the outside and I'm coming to the inside. I saw somebody do this, so I'm gonna try it. And then you leave kind of like a little bit of white if you want in the middle. I don't know. You just gotta try new stuff, right? I'm not leaving white, I'm coloring it. Hey, that works pretty good. Sweet. Uh, I do need some pink. What I was thinking about doing, so this is the color lifter. I'm not gonna try it because I'm happy with the beard, but I was thinking it was gonna be dark. And then uh, I was gonna remove some of the ink with that. Hang on, I gotta grab another color here. Purple. And orange always go really well together. So I'm gonna do a purple shirt uh, and pants. 
What's happening in the comments? November 6th. <laughs> of course there's a technique for blends, Kate. I don't always follow the technique. There's lots of YouTube. <laughs> it looks like pajamas, actually. There's lots of YouTube um, options there for all sorts of ways. I did take a Copic coloring class once upon a time. It was super helpful. It looks like pajamas, doesn't it? It's so cute. It just adds to the cute factor. All right, let's deal with our pumpkin because that's really... Looks like a lantern still, and I need him to be pumpkified. Oops, I forgot to color this hand. It's not really turning out to be the pumpkin that I had envisioned. Um, I want black. Nope. It's not going to be a, I'm going to have to figure out how they did a, made it a jack-o'-lantern. It looks cute like this though too. Okay, now the pajamas are colored. Um, so I can't punch it out, so let's get the dies. I was thinking I would punch it out, but um, not so much. Actually, I don't know where my dies are, so... Looks like I'm cutting them. Sorry, folks. Uh, it'll be quick though. He's pretty quick to do. I don't know where my dies are. That's problematic. I find I that's a that happens to me kind of a lot, doesn't it? My missing die fiasco. Anyways, I know some of you are going to be en route soon to attend the buffet. Zachary is up. He is about to make himself a smoothie. So what's going on this weekend with everybody? Tell me your plans. Are you, I am envisioning some Halloween activities. Zach's got a ghost walk he's going with, with a buddy tonight. And then uh, a pumpkin carving thing to go to with some friends tomorrow. I will be studying. I have, a, I have my first... Uh, assignment due for one of my classes tomorrow so that's what's happening for me it's a nice little break to have the uh, to have the card buffet for sure and our my last live I was thinking I remember I was showing you all those different tricks in my last live and I sometimes I just get talking and then I get sidetracked anyways I said I was gonna show you another trick and then I forgot. So I'm gonna show it to you today because this is the moment. So what we have here, see this white? If you wanted to really get close, you could do that. But watch the magic. So I'm taking, this is a black Sharpie and I'm going around. Now, here's a pro tip folks, do it from the back side because it's possible that you'll do this. That would be bad. See? So can you see the difference between here's the white and then here's how it just finishes? I call it finishing the image. So you just go around. Now, if you had colored paper, uh, if it's Stampin' Up! colored paper, it won't matter because Stampin' Up! dyes their cardstock color all the way through. So if you were to tear a piece of colored cardstock that's Stampin' Up! other companies probably do it too, is you would, the color is throughout, but some papers from the, like the big box retailers, they don't necessarily dye their paper all the way through. So it's possible that you could have a piece of cardstock color and you cut around it and then it kind of has a, I mean, we're talking about some pretty fine details, folks, but it might matter to some people. So I share that with you to do with what you wish. I just can't really get in the crick there of his hat. Okay, cool, right? It's a little tip, I'm full of tips. Okay, so where's my little doodad? Here's my doodad. 
gosh, so cute. So we're gonna use some contraband, which is, it's not contraband, I lie, it's retired. Oh, that seemed harder than it should have. I think I'm gonna, this is the, this is some, just some DSP. Card sock and then DSP, and I'm cutting circles just to create some, I don't really like it. I thought the yellow would go well, which it does, but then I add the orange, whatever, it's fine. I'm not gonna stress about it. I think my glue is clogged though. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Full, oh yes, Christy, you are the party, party planner extraordinaire. Christy sent me this list of, you sent me a list, um, what does it say? You sew one of my bone folders, Kate? <laughs> uh, Christy, where's your comment? Pumpkin carving, apple on, apple on a string. Count the candies. Yes, eat the gross food. So Christy sent me a text message last night of this list of just random food. And of course, with Zach's allergies, we're just making sure he can... I When I read the list, though, like spaghetti and was the beef jerky, or the jerky, I think, was the only one that maybe Zach couldn't have. Okay, so I'm going to recommend when you're doing this to just lay it flat because we want to make sure that this adheres, whoops, and stays, stays on. Look at series, I found this on the web. Series helping me. <laughs> okay, let's do the double fold while this is drying, and then we're done. Cause I gotta get rolling here. Oh, uh, sorry, sidebar, let me show you what, uh, since we're talking about Kate, Kate made this bookmark, super cute, right? So I believe this is the, ta the Trio Tailored Punch, Taylor, I don't know the name of it, and some black string. A couple of pieces of designer series paper and cardstock and it's bookmark, love it. And then this one, this is the sponging technique underneath here. So there's a little bit of Velcro and you open it up and then there's a little bit of hot chocolate. So you could put a glue dot in there if you needed it to, to stay. I, I don't think it needs to. So if you haven't seen it yet, I don't know, Kate, if you have this up on your Facebook page, West Coast Paper Crafter, but the dimensions just might be there. All right, so let's do the last one. <laughs> You're giving me back the bone fold because it's flawed and not worth stealing. <laughs> You're hilarious. All right, let's go down because we're getting out the die cutting board. This is contraband. This is the Martha Stewart. I've had this cutting, or not cutting, uh, scoring mat for, I don't know, 10 or more years. Okay, let me think about this for a second. Now, same, same is that you want to, when this, that's gonna be the outside, but it'll be outside, where's my sample? Oh, here, right in front of me. This is what it is. I'm not gonna take this one apart because I've got this on it already, but as far as whether you want this on the outside or this on the outside, maybe I will, do it this way this time. Okay, so same, same. Another six by six piece of paper. Is it even a question? That's good. I'm not keeping up with the comments, ladies. I'm not keeping up. I feel like I'm, I'm FOMO here. All right, so now um, you need your tool. In mine, I've got the same, it's up here. If you have a Stampin' Up! one, or I'm sure other manufacturers as well, you might have a little holding thing. And then, fun fact, you might check the back side because you might have something else hiding. Mine is you can pull this out and then it helps with some scoring. I don't really know what it's for, to be perfectly honest with you. I've, I don't even know if I've ever used it. <laughs> okay, so. Let's go with our score lines. I'm just looking at my notes here. So
So we're going to score at two and three quarters and five and five eighths. Now, this was not in the newsletter, folks, because um, I added this this morning. So a, am I in camera? Here we go. In So we're two, and in mine, the black lines are the quarters. The blue lines are the eighths. So I'm going two and one, two, three quarters. So this, I think someone said this was a nail, um, like for doing acrylic nails and things maybe. Mine broke, I had two, they both broke. So usually you have a fine tip end and a larger or a fatter tipped end. Don't use this one, this finer tip, it's gonna rip right through your paper. You want to have the fatter tip. Stampin' Up used to sell the scoring like a tool like this. If you still have them, then go ahead and use that. Uh, okay, so five and five eighths. So five and then eight. So I'm counting the blue. So one, two, three, four, five. And so I'm going into this little rivet here. And I mean, I just don't commit right away and go like that because I've I've jumped the track so many times. It's so annoying. Okay, so now we've got two lines, two score lines. Okay, now we're gonna take this same, I haven't done anything, I've just gone from this and I'm now I'm going here. And you want to score it at a half an inch all the way down. Half an inch. Let me just, sorry, I'm, okay. Half an inch, which is right here. So because the paper is not right up against it, just, just go slow because, um, you're also going through two pieces of designer series paper. So just take it easy. Uh, yes, that's a half inch. So I'm starting here and I'm just kind of getting my paper in the groove, holding here. And I'm kind of pressing down here because I'm trying to stay in the lines. And I kind of just go back and forth. Now, if I just had a simple, like one layer cardstock, like let's say we were just going here, I would just go tch, 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 whatever. But because we have two layers, I'm being more purposeful with my scoring concentration. Hopefully that's the hardest thing I have to do today. That's it for the scoreboard. Now, now we will fold. So you should have two lines here and here, and then you're gonna have three lines, one, two, three. Yeah. There's no glue on this one. Same. Uh, so and I have my bone folder out. Feeling bad that I'm missing the comments. I don't want to distract though. That's all I can do to get Zachary to get up and get rolling. I threaten him with uh, p that people are coming. <laughs> so he gets up and, and gets himself organized. All right. Okay, ready? So now we have a piece of six by six. We have all of our score lines and we've got these two that are like so. Yeah, we're good. We're going like this. Now we're going like this, okay? We'll bring it down. Now, you're gonna take, you've got your three, one, two, three score lines. You've got your first one, fold up, flip it over, and fold on the other one. You're just, you're just making the, let me do that again. So you've got this one, going up on the first one, probably easier and then go up on that one so you haven't folded on the middle and then the center one will kind of pop up like so so you've got the top piece like that and then no sorry it's wrong way. this way and then because I want the pockets on the outside I was doing pockets on the inside so like this flip it over and then go this way this way and then marry these two together so they're on the outside. Let me do that again. So we've got this one, this one, flip it over, 
fold up on the first one, flip it over, and then fold down. You know it. You, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. Then you've got this. So now we're going to take this. Oh, I make it look easy, Nancy. It is, girl. It is easy. I'm making it look more difficult than it is, really. So you've just got your stretch of paper. And because we want the pockets on the outside, here's the sample. Like this. This way, this way, this way. Okay, so now we're gonna take a piece of ribbon. And I'll show you a trick. So this one's thick, so I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm, I'm putting it like this. Now this piece with the loop, I want this one to go in into the hole going that way. And then see how this is gonna have a little loop-de-loop -loop here. And then I'm gonna tuck this in there. So let me do that again for you. So we've got our piece like this. We've got our, I've, I've hole punched. I've taken a piece of twine. I've folded it in half. So the loop is at the top. I'm gonna tuck the loop through the hole. Then I'm gonna find my little loop. And now I've got my ends here. And I'm just gonna tuck the ends through the loop and then cinch. That's it. So, I'm not gonna, I don't know where my twine is, it's probably in one of the kits, so I'm gonna not add the twine. But the reason why I add the twine here is because this can come, it can come loose. It's not a big deal, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you could even take some of the same twine and tie it. But I find that if left to its own devices, it will come apart. So you're constantly having to do this, which if it doesn't matter to you, then it doesn't matter to me. So you do you. And then we're tucking. This one, I'm doing tea, chocolate, and a gift card. And then this one stands. Do you love it? Yes, Gail, this is Stampin' Up! Ribbon. Usually I declare... Um, contraband before using it. <laughs> it is metallic mesh ribbon. And there is a ton of it in here. How much is in here? Meters, 10 yards. And it's an inch and a half wide. That's what this tells me. So there's our two little doodads. Uh, where's some other goodies? Gift card that, so here's our, oh yeah, it's dry now. Isn't this one cool? You don't even have to have any glue. So literally 30 seconds, right? Now you can get pretty crazy with how you decorate these. Uh, I'm not gonna decorate this one just because uh, we're running out of time here. But for this one, I've just used a circle punch and attached it, obviously the other side of the paper. So you could do the same. You could punch and just add it. And it sits on its own can sit up or it can lay flat. And then this one does not stand, it's just a little pocket. Cool, right? That's it. Then let me bring back in these ones that Kate made because they're Halloween-y. This is your last sort of opportunity for this year, I guess, is um, making some little last minute treats. And then here's the other one that I made. Another, so this is called the diaper fold. And then this is not a double diaper fold. This is uh, something about a pocket, I think. But if you're looking up diaper folds, these typically come up in the search results as well, like on Pinterest or YouTube, wherever you get your inspiration. I do, I agree, Nancy. I think it looks better with the twine as far as the tops. I think it just finishes it off a bit, hey? Okay, folks, thanks for stopping by. And if you missed the little run through I did at the beginning, I showed you what the buffet looks like today. And there's a couple of spots left 
in Buffy's for November. And then I do have a couple spots left for the November five or six mega class. Ooh, let me show you the um, product share for that. We are going to do, so you're gonna get a half a sheet of these. You're gonna get some of these. These are the open leafed trinkets. You're gonna get half a roll of this, which is the satin edged ribbon. We're also going to get some of these iridescent snowflakes. And I'm gonna throw in a pack of dimensionals because why not? And these, I'm gonna open them right now. I haven't looked at these, but you know, it's kind of like this product share is like, ooh, you kind of splurge because normally I don't, I don't buy myself stuff like this. I really should because it, you, you guys uh, should be my excuse. Well, you know, it's product research. Uh, I need to order all the things. <laughs> Anyways, so I felt kind of fancy when I was ordering these. Okay, so these are substantial. Like they're, um, sorry, what I mean by substantial is like thick. They're like a good, it's not like a, it's not a flimsy paper, like the DSP, it's, it's, it's pliable. This is not, that's cute. Oh my God, so cute. So it's got, the stars are pre-cut. Oh my gosh, I should have been using this. You could have made little jack-o'-lanterns out of these. And it, it feels like there's, um, like a plasticky film in here, which to me tells me that these are food safe. This is what Stampin' Up! typically does. So these are called Star Stars Treat Bags. It doesn't say it on the package, but it will online. I'm 99.9% .9 positive that this film on the inside means they're food safe. And that's it. Those are all your bits and bobs. So that's November five or six. It's 10 projects, virtual or in person, and then you get some of this, all this stuff in the product share. Beautiful. Okay, folks, message me if you're interested. If not, I will see you around online. Have an awesome weekend, and thanks for checking in. Bye for now.